Canon, Nikon or Sony? Which one would I choose now if I would start again with wildlife and landscape photography? That's a question I get asked quite a lot, as well as the question if I now regret that I jumped from uh, Sony to Canon a few years ago. And I think the question is not that simple to answer, but I also think it's not so, so important. I think it's a bit an overrated question. By now, all systems are very good. They have great cameras, great lenses, but still they all have their strengths and weaknesses, maybe different ones than five or 10 years ago. And in this video, I just want to share my thoughts about this topic and maybe help you with the decision if let's say end 2022, beginning of 23, you would like to go um, in a new system, start with wildlife photography and spend a bit of money. I think the first point that is quite important is to acknowledge that it's a system. The camera and the lenses together form a system and you always need to look at the whole system, not only at lenses or cameras. So I will now go through the three brands and discuss a bit what I think about the camera and lens lineup that they have. And I will start with Canon. I think at the moment they have the best cameras except maybe for the Sony A1, but I will get back to this in a minute. But I think the R5, the R7 and the R6 Mark II probably as well, just based on what we already know and how the R6 was performing the original one. I think they're not only good cameras, but they are in my opinion the best bang for the buck that you can get. Granted, the R5 is not cheap, but you get like 90% of a Sony A1 for far less money. So I think that's a really nice offer, also like the R7 if you want to um, not jump to full frame but stick with APS-C. And if we look at the lineup of lenses, I think they also have great lenses. They have a lot of new RF lenses, the Super Telephoto lenses, I could not try them yet, but they're supposed to be better than the EF lenses, so must be amazing. I have the 14 to 35 for landscapes, which is really very nice. And they have some medium range zooms like the 70 to 200 that I was able to test a bit and the 100 to 500 that I own since half a year and absolutely love by now. And if we look at the whole lineup, I have the feeling Canon shifted a bit to their focus to making light lenses. So they are not fixed in the length anymore. They are like this tubus is going out. If you zoom, for example, for the 14 to 35, 70 to 200, 2.8 and for the 100 to 500, um, which might have some downsides in terms of dust and uh, water resistance. I don't know how much of a deal it is, but it really helps to cut the weight and the dimensions down if you put it in the backpack. So for me, that's welcome. Um, what's also maybe important to know is that the old EF glass is still working very well. In my experience, all the EF glass I was having worked at least as good as on the R5 than on my 5D Mark IV. So this means that you can easily adopt older glass. For example, I'm still shooting with my EF 600mm f4 from the second generation, just because the RF is a quite an expensive upgrade. Um, and that works really well. Just if you want the best image stabilization and the best autofocus, you might still need to buy the RF glass. And here at the moment, many of them are rather pricey. There are some exceptions like the 800 f11 or something. But the, the more the L line is quite expensive and Canon didn't open the mount for third party manufacturers, meaning mostly Sigma and Tamron cannot do lenses like with the other brands or like they could with EF. So if you want to use a, let's say Tamron 150 to 600, you need to take the EF version. Um, yeah, so that's maybe not ideal for me, not a big deal. I prefer by now to shoot just the native glass at least for wildlife where the autofocus matters, but uh, this might be something to consider. Now let's switch to Sony, which I think they also have some great cameras. The a7 IV is a very good all-rounder, just it still has some rolling shutter and from what I could test, the autofocus is nowhere close to an R5, so probably also not close to an R6 Mark II. So I think Canon has the edge here, but Sony has now released the A7R Mark V, which looks quite promising. 
and they have the A1, which I think is a fantastic all-around camera, better than the R5 in some ways, but also a bit more expensive. But if you go for the A1, I think you're really well set. They also have some good lenses that go with the um, A1. For example, the 600 millimeter of Sony is just a bit smaller than the Canon RF version. Not necessarily lighter, but the smaller part is nice. And I mean, expensive, both are expensive. Um, and you can also have third party manufacturer lenses, which might be nice if you want to not invest too much money. But here I need to say that Sony is also offering a bit cheaper lenses. So they have the 100 to 400 millimeter that is quite expensive, like as the 100 to 500 from Canon, the RF. They're like comparable in this sense. But then we have the Sony 200 to 600, which is a fantastic lens for beginners. It's a bit bigger, of course, than 100 to 400 or 100 to 500. But if this is your main lens or your only lens, maybe not so big of a deal and it's really way more affordable. Um, again, maybe not as good as the 100 to 500, but a very good option and you can stay with native glass. Finally, let's have a look at Nikon. So I never really tested the Z6 or Z7, but from what I heard from people that owned the camera was really that they struggled a bit with the autofocus and that the, they said that the D850, so the last DSLR from Nikon, um, was still doing a better job and they mainly used the D850 and also with the successor, the Z7 Mark II. But this all changed when Nikon announced the Z9, um, which offers amazing autofocus. Uh, it's quick, good image quality. It has basically everything you can wish for. But I don't like the body. For me, it's just too heavy. I go a lot of hiking, for example, when I take pictures of Ibex. Um, I usually bring my tent, my sleeping bag, I need food, I need water. Then, yeah, I need a couple of lenses, usually I'm taking four. One of them is my big 600 millimeter. Um, and then I usually tend to take two camera bodies that I can switch a bit. And in the end, my backpack is quite heavy. I need to hike with this for several hours. And then it makes a difference if I have two R5s or the Z7 if you want, or two Z9s. That's a difference of probably 1.2 kilo or something. And that's quite a difference. So here I'm not 100% happy. So what I hope that they bring soon is like a Z8 that is just equivalent to an R5 that has the good autofocus of the, of the Nikon Z9. Um, but yeah, a bit in a smaller body. But where Nikon really shines, in my opinion, is with the lens lineup, with the recent additions, like these rather lightweight telephoto lenses. I mean, Canon has them. The 800 f11 is super light, but for me, it's a bit too extreme, at least if I use it uh, more or less professionally. And Nikon has like the 800 6.3, which is, I mean, it's still quite, still quite a large aperture, but it's so much more compact than the 800 millimeter f 5.6 from Canon. And I think that's great as well as the 400 millimeter f4.5. And what I'm most jealous about is the 400 millimeter 2.8 and 600 millimeter f4 that both come with a, a built-in extender that you can just activate or deactivate. Because I can't tell you how often I was swearing because I had the extender in and then I quickly needed to take a picture where I wanted to have a bit more around or the opposite. So yeah. I really hope that Canon and Sony will in the next two or three years update their lens lineup and bring something like this because for me that's almost a game changer. Having an integrated teleconverter it's, has been a dream since probably eight years for me and I really hope they will do it as well. Uh, I think Nikon is doing a really good job here. I just hope they catch a bit up with the cameras. So overall what's my conclusion? Um, well it's quite hard if I would really lose all my equipment. Let's say it would got stolen, the insurance would pay me the money and I have this money to buy new equipment. I think I might still go with Canon, but I'm not 100% sure. The thing from Nikon that is stopping me is really the lack of a camera that I would really fit for me. For me, the R5 is almost perfect, but then yeah, these, these lenses of Nikon are really look really good. Um, Sony for me is like on a similar level than Canon as well. So I would maybe also peak a bit there, but I think my heart still somehow belongs a bit more to Canon. I'm just more used to it. And I think that's also something you should consider. How well do you deal with the camera? 
Um, do you like the setup? Even though I need to say nowadays you can change quite a lot of the buttons, buttons and everything, but I would still encourage you to try it a bit before you buy. And yeah, I hope this video was somehow helpful or interesting or entertaining or whatever. And if you want, you can go to my channel and I will make a small poll about which camera brand you would buy if you would need to decide now. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you can just go to the community chat uh, community tab there and vote in the poll. I will be really interested to see your results and see you in the next video. Bye!